What a great day. And the occasion that's when you cause all Yisrael to gather and the revelation and the knowledge of Yahshua HaMashiach by the power of his Ru'ach whereby there will be no need for any man to teach us anything concerning the ways of Yah. For we as a nation, a people, we shall know all things when the revelation and the fullness of Torah is revealed unto his people. When all the gates of the stronghold of hell are cast down to the depths of darkness, we as a nation of people began to cast down every vile, insidious encroachment of hell upon the integrity of Almighty Yah, where there were being no doubts, no schisms, no folly, no falsehood, but we all will be real, unsincere, undedicated. And in order for us to come to that state of mind, there will be a great purging of the fire of Yah, trials beyond the comprehension of man. That's why we are so laxadaisia. We sin willingly. We defy the commands of Yah without even thoughts of repercussion. It is because there is no consideration of him at all. Because once we consider the very power of his instructions, as an example, a child away from the parents, yet they have instructed them well, and yet the fear of those instructions keep them. I recall when I was with Evangelist Hartsfield, one particular summer, his son, Iving, was a very brilliant student. He was. So IBM had given him an internship in Chicago. So he had to leave from Rock Hill, South Carolina, and travel to Chicago, Illinois, for three months to work in, in one of the internships there at IBM. And I will never forget, I was somewhat troubled by that because I knew he was a young man. I knew the very trials and the approach of hell, how the enemy encroaches upon a young man like that. Very handsome, very charming, very studious young man. And he was all of those superlatives, he really was. And I said to Evangelist Hartsfield, I said, you know, I, I really don't want to see the lad go there to Chicago because of the trials and the great onslaught of hell that were war in his mind. And I will never forget, he looks at me <clears throat> and he says to me, Brother Roberts, it's either what we have put in him shall stand the test or he never had anything at all. So either he will endure or he was false and insincere from the beginning. And so those words were a great consolation to me because I know that Yah speaks to his nation that if we train up our children in the way that they should go, that they should enter into the presence of Yah yeah. to offer up the offerings. He said they will not, when they are old, and when they began to grow older, they will not go astray. They will not turn away because the wicked go astray from the womb, from the Emma womb. The wicked began to transgress against Yah. That's why they are children of darkness and death. And they are created for destruction. And Yah is going to destroy them. And they are those that are of the light. They illuminate the very brilliancy of your sure the power of that testimony is real. And they live your sure. They walk your sure. They walk in the power of that Eda because they are witnesses 
to the power of the Most High. That is what the Edah is, the testimony of the power of Yah. It is that there is a true witness of the substance of that power in us. We have learned to walk in hypocrisy quite well. We have learned to be hypocrites quite well. But to have a sincere devotion unto Yah, we find that difficult to walk in. And so we will always say that it is somewhat hard. But it's not hard. We transgress in our corrupt ways. Then it's very difficult for us. We're going to have the difficulties. We greet you all that have joined us in the precious name of Yahshua Hamashiach. You that have joined us by the visual or the audio stream. We greet you all in Yahshua's mighty name. I do want to teach today and we bring salutations to you all. Wherever you are, wherever you're listening, we do salute you all. In the precious name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do brach. And when we imply that usage of the word, it is to praise, it is to bring salutation, and it is also to bring the curse as well, the khala. It has its definitive. And when Yah speaks a word, it is the power of Him. It is His substance in every word. It is his substance in every word. That's why every word of Yah is pure. We are the servants of Yah. We have a great love for his Torah. And when we don't have a great love for his Torah because we're full of uh, deceit, we're full of our own darkness, and our minds are estranged from Yah. We show him the fidelity of our love toward him, because we delight in the Torah of Yah when he instructs us. Uh, it is not something that is burdensome or grievous unto us. Uh, it is of great delight. And we rejoice in that. That's why when you correct any wise man, when he is a wise man, when he has the, the hukhma, the wisdom of Torah, you correct any wise man, he will love you abundantly. But you do not correct a man that is an event. A foolish man he'll despise you you will get a blot he will reject you and of course over these many years I've experienced that believe me the ones that say they love me were the ones that turned out to be my most powerful enemies and yet they said they love me that's why don't tell me you love me I don't want to hear it from anyone your actions will show whether you love me I want to continue in the teaching. I had to somewhat divert my intention on last week because there are things that are vitally important that we must share. We're dealing with a season and a time, a nation that Yah elected before the foreknowledge of the knowledge of man. And he created a lineage for that nation to bring forth the excellence of his power. That nations would understand the very dynamic power of Yah, and men would fear Yah, and they would honor Him. We're a time whereby there is no honor for Yah at all, not even among Israel. Yah. And because of our wickedness, He has ordained a Sarah, a time whereby He shall unleash the powers of hell. To war against the very mind of the conscience of man uh, and to bring a frontal assault against the mind of Yahshua Hamashiach. We are not going to operate in the realm of Yah's uh, Shalom without that mind of Yahshua Hamashiach. And this mind that we ponder matters in, it is easily. It is easily thrown down. It is driven to a state of emotionalism whereby it does not draw upon the concrete things of the Torah. You ever found yourself in a situation you began to draw from your sensual emotions, your feelings? We're all guilty of that one. We do not draw upon the essence and the concrete reality of Torah. 
then we will find ourselves faltering and turning away from Yah and trying to resolve the remedy by our own nature of our strength and we have no strength unless it has come from Yah and we began to denounce him we must get real in all the applications of the Torah we must become sincere we must be committed unto Yah and that his pleasure is that we walk in the light of his Torah and we do it with great delight. It is not a burden to me. It is not of difficulties to me because whatever thing that I encounter, I simply give Yah to them, to them, unto Yah. And that is what we as a nation of people must do. I want to continue, let me, because I've made the statement often that we must understand that this whole scenario that shall present itself unto Yisraya, unto the world, it is not about you buying breads and loaves and sustaining your physical, biological life. It is not about that. Because we know that it is appointed unto all men to die. It is not you being able, Yisraya, as the very subtlety of uh, acceptance and acquaintance, whereby our mind accept lies from men. And we don't even question the lies according uh, to the Torah. It is not about buying breads. The whole writing of Gilyana, it deals with one specific. It is about what we call Shecha, the worship, the bowing down to fall prostrate and to offer up a salutation, a oblation unto Yah. There is a continuous refreshing of one's bosom to offer unto Yah that which identify him as the most excellent and mighty one. And your heart never gets tired of doing that. It is about one aspect, and in order for us to understand that, uh, we must go back to the Bereshit, uh, the beginning of all things, and see where this concept of bowing uh, was introduced unto man, and what man, why that man, uh, and what came out of that man's loins. But I want to begin here again, uh, in Revelation, Juliana 13 uh, and 7. You can find nowhere in the whole book of Juliana, Anything that deals with the natural substance of man. These liars will tell you that there is going to be a chaotic atrocity. Whereby the nuclear bombs are going to flow from the corners of the earth. The grounds, the wells are going to be polluted just like Arazachin brought out to us when Yisraya was in Misraim. And yet the waters were turned into blood and death on the fishes. And all of that is of grave importance. And the stench and the vileness of that. That where was the waters to drink? The puddles of water, where was it? That's why we must drink the living water, the living Torah, Yisrael. We must drink the light because there's only life in the Torah of Yah. Without the Torah, we would not even know when we were infringing upon our Abba. You must understand that when the waters were turned to this degree, that they were not turned back unto clear drinking water. The plagues were upon this nation and this people because they had oppressed and suppressed the people of Almighty Yah. And that is why Yah is going to show his hands upon the nations. They have ridiculed, they have robbed, they have oppressed. They have suppressed a nation that he has elected. And because of our defiance and our faithfulness, uh, of our trustworthiness unto him, uh, then we're going to prove uh, that he is the essence of the power that he speaks of. We're going to have to prove it. And so in the midst of all of this chaos, man is trying to galah, he is trying to redeem himself. 
He is trying to find some redemption. His conscience will not allow him. His mind is so weary and so distraught. He can draw on nothing for strength. And out of the midst of all of that chaos shall arise this powerful entity of hell. The persona of the enemy of Yah. Hashatan is the enemy. He is the Oeb. He is an arch enemy of Yah. Any man, any woman that operates not in the Torah of life, they are the enemies of Yah. They are the enemies of Almighty Yah. There is his enemies. Well, that sounds too simple. The truth is simple. And Yah is straightforward. I don't care what kind of touch you want to give to it. It is the truth. And in the midst of all of this calamity, man will seek to redeem, to save himself. In the midst of great terror, you're seeking to save your life, are you not? And so no man will be able to redeem himself, to have a sense of security, unless he receives the allegiance of this mind that is diametrically opposed to Yah. It does not savor the truth of Yah. It rejects everything that is of Yah and the power of his kingdom authority, his covenant with Israel, Yah, it is based in his name. It is the power of his name. It is the power of his name. It is about who we know that we are worshiping. And we must know that. And so the powers of hell uh, will draw this unto that one uh, that has been risen up by the birth of hell. Was not your sure raised up by the birth of Yah? So there shall come one that has been raised up by all hell. He should be the embodiment of Hashatan. And out of his speech, out of his mouth, uh, shall come this false entity uh, that proclaims the power of this one uh, as we see in what we call the church today. That's why they raise up this damnable, effeminate, faggot image uh, they call Jesus Christ. It is a damn lie. There is no truth in any lie, period. You cannot have leaven because leaven leaveth. It corrupts the whole nature of the matter. We must reject it. We must throw away that image out of our minds and begin to follow after truth, Israel. In the midst of all that, the Nobi of Yah, the prophet, he stands up and he speaks with clarity of this proclamation revelation 13 and verse 17 he says and that no man no individual will have the ability to buy that is kana you will not have the ability to redeem yourself you will have not the power to buy torah truth that's why we should buy the truth wisdom and understanding we shall not sell it. We sell the truth of Yah for every kind of wicked association there is. We frankly do not give a damn. Yah is the originator of all things. The life of all things originate with Yah. And so no man will be able to come out. He cannot even create bread. You cannot even break bread without the zira, the seed of Yah's creation. You cannot have the life of chigva, of hope, and the light of the very assurance in you without the bread of Yah. And so this false delusion of bread, that's why Hashatan said to Yahshua, if thou be the son of Yah, take this stone. He did not say those stones, it is a Pacific. And we need to understand that I'll teach it one day, Yisrael. He said, take this stone and command it to be made bread, that this stone from out of this bosom, the power of life shall come. The assurance of life out of the gates of hell, uh, there is life. Uh, give credence unto me, and all of this uh, will I bestow upon you. All of this will I grant unto you, because he understood the better sheets, the beginning of all things. No man is going to be, going to be able to buy your goal, will not mean a damn thing. 
As Yeshua said, they're going to cast it into the street. And if we're going to have all the pollution that this damn wicked uh, religious generation speaks of, uh, then how are we going to grow in the soil when it's polluted? The fish of the sea will be polluted and cancerous diseases uh, as we see already. It's almost, uh, it's almost fearful to eat anything uh, you buy out of what we call the storehouse. Uh, that's why you come out in Israel, you have to bring all the tithes and offering uh, into the storehouse that there may be meat, uh, the wherewithal and the season uh, and the time of great dearth uh, in the earth. We have consumed everything uh, upon our damn wicked flesh, Yisra, ya. We don't give a damn about ya. And I said bluntly, frankly, uh, without any reservation of my speech, we don't give a damn. And that's the truth. It is recorded in the book, his nation, his people. We just don't give a damn. And that is the truth. No man will be able to buy. Your silver will not mean a damn thing. Your gold, all the food that you put back. Isn't this a stupid generation? Because if it's the nuclear fallout, you think you're going to preserve something in a little pine tree? You think that this, this, this tremendous um, altering of even the, the temperature and all of that where the bodies are dehydrating, uh, you think your little 5,000 gallons of water are going to last long? Uh, and with the very nature of the minds of that generation and that people, when they shall be scouring their neighbors uh, and they shall turn their brothers and their sisters, uh, a vile hatred shall proceed out of their loins. Uh, and they shall kill their brothers and their sisters. There shall be anguish against mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. You think that they will not sell you out for uh, to redeem themselves? Uh, that you are opposed unto the mandate of one that has the authority to mandate? We're full of our folly and our foolishness, our own sin. No man, your goal will not mean a damn thing. Your bank account will have no relevance. Your fine clothing, your jewelry, it will be of no value. And you're not going to be able to plant. You are commanded, go safe to go into the land when his brother sold him into slavery. There was a drought. You could plant all you want. You, you ask the farmers there in Illinois. You ask them in Texas and Missouri. You ask them in Colorado. It was a drought. I don't care how much irrigation you put. It just doesn't produce it. Lack the Mayim. The waters of heaven. It doesn't bring the same growth, beauty, and the nutrition that come from above. And that is a fact. And if all of this nuclear fallout is coming... You tell me that the nuclear clouds, when they rain, they rain death. So the bombs are dropped to the nuclear clouds that move from here to the city of North Carolina. It brings death. It rains down death. It rains down pollution. And that pollution is just not the steel from the soil. We need something greater than some damn silver. You need something greater than some damn gold. You need something greater than what you call your faith. We need the power of your truth, Yisrael. Yeah. And our loins and in our bosom that we can sustain the power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. And the mitzvah, the commands of Yah are our delight. And you must be gone at the door. You cannot enter into his house under some kind of false presumption and some damn false God and some false Jesus. You must come right. You must come right to his house. And if you do not woe unto you, people, uh, no man is able to buy. He is not able to acquire the knowledge of wisdom. That is the, the definitive. That is the nature of Hana. They will not be able to acquire the wisdom. How do I operate in this system? The gold of the silver will not give you that strength. That is what it's all about. The power of the mind to control the very, the very thoughts of the mind. I was reading how that this young man out there in Aurora, Colorado, how he killed those people, and yet he was in this type of, uh, of this mind-altering process, how they're able to alter the mind, they're able to do it through the tell lies, the vision of lies and darkness, the vision of falsehood. 
And we consume that day and night like some damn fools, Yisrael. I don't give a damn if you don't love me. Alter your mind, your emotions, your passion, your desire for your husband, your, your wife, your children. You have such confidence in that you let that babysit your children. That's wicked. Uh, you got such confidence in that it babysits your children. When you're tired of them, you put them in front of that. When you want some relief, you put them in front of that. That is so damn wicked. There is nothing more wicked than that. I don't give a damn what you say. Hallelujah. No man will be able to require the knowledge. No one will be able to redeem his house, his people. Nobody. He said, and neither will they be able to God, be able to say, Allah, they will have no redeeming kinsmen. There will be no kinsmen to redeem them. Just like Ruth there and Naomi. There will be no Ga'al. There will be no Ga'al, no redeeming, no kinsman. That's why what a man, his wife, he had in his possession. He died without child. Then the one that was responsible for that was the brother of the next of the elders in line. And then he would receive her, go into her. She would bring forth a child. And that is what Yah has done. Listen to me. Everything is right according to the Torah. Everything. He said his only son to bring forth, although we were unbearing, we didn't bear, uh, bring forth any substance of fruit. We did not bring forth any substance of fruit. He allowed the power of the living Torah to enter into our bosom and to bring forth the excellence of his power. And we reject that. We want to play the role of a harlot. It's like the wife said, I don't want him. He's not far as the third one. I don't like that because it's not, uh, it's not appeasing, it's not apotea. You're directing that to me, yes, because you're wicked uh, and you're vile. We don't want that, Yisrael. His shoulder's not as wide as the, the younger brother. He's young and he's strong. you said, I sent forth the excellence of my power. And if you sup, if come and sup with him... He will come and drink of the living Torah with you. He will abide in you. It's all about one thing. It's about worship, Yisrael. And so no man will be able to redeem himself. That's what religion does. It makes people feel nice after they go to their whole houses. They go there filthy and wicked. They come out filthy and wicked. And they will say, I I've gone to church all my life. I believe that. And no man will be able to go out. No one will be able to redeem themselves. He saved unless that individual that has a mark and the name of the beast and the number of his name. Now we know that if we read on through Revelation, the very terror of Yahweh is going to be poured out. I want to deal with that today. So how can a man redeem? Well, what is this saying? That no man will be able to save himself unless he has the mark of the beast. No man will find any kind of comfort or any assurance in the midst of all of the gravity of that great oppression unless his allegiance is unto hell. Unless he has given his mind over unto the forces of darkness to fight against the power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. Just like in your mama, your daddy, your kinsmen that ridicule, reject, speak falsely and evil against you. They are of hell. You don't sit down and, and sit down and enjoy their dinners of, of wickedness and you feast on the tables of vomit of hell. I will not do it. So no man would be able to redeem himself. No man would be able to give an account for himself as though that he is a righteous man. Unless he has the mark of the beast. Unless he has the power of his name. So it is with Yah, we must have the power of his name. We must. It is all about worship. I'm going to finish this today. It may take me just a tad longer, but I want to finish this, all right? I want to deal with that for a moment. The first place in Torah where, whereby, whereby we can see the very, the act of worship here. Hashatan always examined the patterns. The Tazneeth. He always, he understands that. So he must go back to the beginning of the blessings of Yah upon the zira, the seed of Yah. And it begins here in Bereshit, Genesis, chapter 18. I want to read this, chapter 18, verse 1. This is the first time whereby 
the word worship of Shekha is mentioned in the book. Genesis chapter 18 verse 1. This is the first time. And it talks about here in Genesis 18 1. And Yahweh, does it say that the Abba? Then Yahweh, he appeared. Or he, 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 he Yahweh, he ra'a. He appeared, he made himself visible unto him, unto Abraham, that he may inspect him. That is, he appeared to Abraham, and he appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, in the plains of strength, and where the fatness of Yah were. He appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day as Abraham uh, sit in the midst and that heat represents uh, the very afflictions of trials uh, the very Sarah he sat in the door because uh, of the great agony of the heat uh, like we sit in the air-conditioned buildings uh, so that was his relief from the great uh, power and the very force of this fire this heat uh, that resonated out of the earth uh, and he lifted up his eye in, and he looked and he said lo there stood three men just like the three unclean spirits that shall come out of the mouth of the beast and they were like frogs three unclean spirits he saw three men three melach melachim messengers of Yah, those uh, that were given the power of the message of his Torah to make sure that it was guarded uh, to err into the bosom of Abraham. He saw three men uh, that stood by and when he saw them, the Torah says he ran to meet them uh, from the tent door and he bowed, he shakha, he bowed himself toward the ground. If you are the son of Yah, then bow down and acknowledge me. Abraham, his sure sign that this was Yah, that he sure showed the salutation of bowing. He is going to try, the enemy of hell is going to try to break every strength of the assurance of the Torah out of the heart of man. That's why we are being baffled and buffeted now. And our strength is seeming, uh, it is abating us. Very low strength, Yisrael. That's why we should be two or three gathering in His name. And when we gather in the power of the assurance of that name, He shall be in the midst. You're not going to be able to Hana. You're not going to be able to Gaal. You're not going to redeem yourself. You're not going to be the kinsman redeemer. There will be no strength in your loins at all. And so here... That this beast of hell, he is always walking to and fro. In the book of Yosha, in the book of Yosha, it talks about uh, when the Hashatan, he was going to and fro in the earth. Uh, and he began to ridicule Abraham. He said, he has not brought an offering, sister. He has not showed your salutation. And Yosha said, all of that is right. He said, but I tell you what. Whatever he has, I can ask, and he will grant that unto me. Just like with Eob, Yisrael. And so he knew the very lineage of the seed that was in Abraham to bring the rich blessings of Yah upon Yisrael. This is the power to sustain the testimony of truth. And that's why the enemy has drawn our minds and drawn us away from truth, Yisrael. And brought us up under all kinds of false paradigms, Christianity and lies that are corrupt, Christmas and Easter, and every kind of damn pagan day it is. Feeding us with the lust of our own flesh, greedy and lustful, cannot have enough. There is not enough for us. You know it's not, yeah. It isn't. And so the force of hell seeing this, he knows that unless one, a man, has the assurance of Yah's truth in him, he is of low value. And so there must be an allegiance, you on the Yah's side or you on the side of hell. As Yahushua says, whose side are you on? Whose side are you on? I'm on Yah's side. I am not on Baal, I am not on the damn Lord Jesus or the damn Lord God, damn them. 
I am on your side. That's the only side that I am on. Hallelujah. For out of that zero of Abraham shall the nations be blessed. Do you not understand? Yah gives us an account. And then I want to go to Gilyana. But he gives us an account and everything in Torah, there's a pattern. You must look at the pattern to understand. There's a great trial and tribulation that is coming. So was in the day of Abraham. Quickly in the book of Bereshit, Genesis 26. Hallelujah. I'm not going to read all this because there's much I want to read today and I want to get to those things. Yah says to Abraham in Genesis 26, verse 4, Yah says to Abraham, he said, I will make your zira. He said, I will make your seed. Genesis 26, verse 4. He said, I will make your zira your seed. He uses the words, I will make them to become rabbah. I will make your seed to become rabbah, to become great, to become exceedingly powerful. This is what Yah says, I will make your seed to become ba bara. I will make them your seed, Abraham. He's talking to Abraham right here, Yisrael. He says, I will make them great as the chokhab or the stars of the illuminated light. They shall illuminate. That's why he compared us to that. In the midst of all the darkness, they shall illuminate the power of Torah. They shall shine as the brightness of Torah. They shall shine with the light of the testimony of Yahshua. He said, I will make them as the stars of Hashem I am. And he also says, and I will give your, I will northern, I will bestow upon your seed. Now, when Yah uses the word give, he is northern. He has bestowed, he has granted, he has shown favor. He said, I will give unto your Zira, Abraham. He said, all the land, all the countries that are around, the Philistines and the land that we call the Middle East. He said, I will give your seed, your Zira, all the land. I will give them all the country. And he says, and your zira and your seed shall, the seed of Abraham, your zira shall, all the nations of the Olam, they shall be barak. They shall praise or salute or they shall be cursed. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to have the riches of Yah. That is what the word barach, and if you define it by the lexicon, it denotes that. To praise a salutation as well as to curse. We can say, I barach you in the midst of a vow spirit. We're actually cursing one another. And you know you're not saluting your, you're not saluting your neighbor. You know that. You know your heart is not right. You know your mind is not true. You know your motive is not sincere and pure. And then you say, I barach you. You actually said, I curse you, you beast of hell. So out of the bosom of Abraham shall the nations, they're going to be blessed because they receive them. They're going to receive the salutations of Yah or they're going to be cursed. Why? Because Yah gives us the indication here in the next verse. In verse 5, he said, because Abraham, he shemach, he obeyed. He obeyed with faithfulness. He obeyed my goal. He obeyed my voice, the substance of my wealth. The voice of Yah is the substance of his wealth. Our Zochina showed us that uh, as when he speaks, uh, he, how he divides the fire, how the mountains uh, and even the waves of the sea, even the dragons of the ocean come forth uh, when Yah speaks, the seven gold of Yah. He said, even my voice, uh, he said, he has Shema, he has guarded and kept faithfully uh, my Sava, my command, what I've commanded him, what I've instructed him. Uh, he said, he has kept my mitzvah, my works, the labor of my works. He has kept them. He has guarded them. He has guarded them. He has, he has guarded them. He said, he has kept my hook, 
my statutes, what I have prescribed, the limitations of one's, uh, 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 one's own will, the limitations uh, of your direction. He has kept all that. He has guarded all that. Uh, and he said, above all, he has kept my Torah. He has kept my Torah. He has kept the commands of Yah. And this is what this whole agonizing assault is a gat. That's why the enemy of hell, he is saying that you're not going to redeem. Did not Yah redeem Abraham out of the great afflictions and the great tyranny of trials that, that, that he was embarked upon, Yisrael? Did not Yah uh, deliver him out of that? Did he not bring him forth? Was not at this time when he was sitting in the tent's door uh, in the plains of Mamre that Yah has sent the messengers for one thing to tell them that the land of Omar and Sidon, I'm going to burn it in the terror of my anger. And although he had Lot there, his nephew, and yet Yah said, If yet if there be ten that are Sadiq in the land, I will spare it. If he found ten righteous ones, He's going to spare the nation of Yisrael. You understand? And although the Melachim, the messengers of Yah, they came to warn to flee from this place. We must flee from this religious atrocity that is taking place. To pollute our minds and to remove us away from just what Abraham delighted in. He delighted in the mitzvah of Yah. He delighted in the wisdom of Yah. He delighted in the statutes of Yah. Come on, Yisrael. Was that before the Lord gave a Moshe? Sure it was. Sure it was. And he uses the word he delights in my laws, my Torah. That is what law and how it, it, it enunciated in the Hebraic Torah, Torah, Torah. And he delighted in my Torah. That's what Yah says. And yet in the midst of all of that, the trials should try him in his Israel when the Melach said to uh, uh, Sarah, and she was supposed to be a noble woman. And they both were well beyond their age, that you shall bring forth a child. And she laughed. And so she named him Yitzhak or Yitzhak, which he that laughs. And yet they were well beyond that. So, Yah, listen, your damn sib is not going to do a damn thing. He is the same Abad that Abraham, because he walked, listen, Yisrael, Yah, because he obeyed the voice of Yah, that's what we must do. If we obey the voice of Yah, he kept the commands of Yah, what Yah Sava, he kept the charge of Yah. He honored what Yah, when Yah instructed him, he kept those things, Yisrael, Yah. He kept the mitzvah of Yah, the works of Yah, the works of Sadiq, of the works of righteousness. Uh, he kept that. Your sure is our work of righteousness. We must keep this aid down the power of that testimony in our mind. You're not going to overcome without the testimony of your sure Hamashiach. You can't love your life uh, unto this death. Uh, let Yah destroy the element of this damn flesh. And he kept the statues, the hukmah of Yah, his hukah, which is prescribed, what he prescribed to us. Yahshua sure brought the power of that light unto us, more vivid. We keep that Yisrael, Yah, and he kept the Torah of Yah. These are the mitzvah, this is what the Torah is based upon. This is not new, it's been there from the beginning. So when one rejects his name, they reject him. You ever heard individuals say, I don't even want that name to be, I don't want to hear that name. Someone that they're disgruntled against, someone they're mad with. Come on, Yisrael. Yeah. Now you, some of you young ones may not have heard that, but we that are climbing the wall, all right, we've heard that. Don't even mention his name in my presence. He's a dirty dog. Don't mention her name in my presence. When you do that, it makes me angry. It makes me want to do something to her. Don't mention his name because I will kill that fool. The way he did me, I will kill him. That's the parallel. That's the parallel. You understand? So Abraham, he kept. And in the midst of the great fire that burned upon those cities, Yah kept him. 
and all that appertain unto him. It was the power of Torah that redeemed him. That was what he had to buy or his gala. That he had this redeeming power. It was the kana. He had the knowledge. He could buy that truth that Yah spoke. That he sent by his messengers. And he, can hold, he could hold fast to that. And so no man is going to be able to buy or to sell. Unless their legion is unto hell. No man is going to be able to preserve his house. Unless he give allegiance unto hell, Yisraeliah. Unless he swear to the council that is adamantly against Almighty Yah. And there shall be delusions to delude the mind of many. Because Yah is sending those strong delusions because they have no love for truth. We don't love Torah. And that is the truth, Yisraeliah. One more reading here. You know this is not gold or silver. In the book of Kepha, 1 Peter, we are the redeemed of Yah. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18, quickly. Peter expressed here unto Yisraeliah, he says, For as much as you yada, as you yada, you were not ga'al. That is what the word redeem is. Just like sell, you were not ga'al. You were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. So we know that silver and gold is corrupt. Why would these liars tell people to buy silver and gold? And this the strength of their redemption. We were not redeemed, we were not ga'al with silver or gold. From our fruitile spiritual conduct... Received by the tradition of our avat. We were not redeemed from the fruital or the fruitlessness of our traditions the way we walk. Whether it was a Baptist, a Methodist, a Pentecostal, grandmama's religious, dad religion. It was vile, it was corrupt, it was traditions of our forefathers. Didn't, this did not buy us. The damn Baptist way did not buy you out of the depths of darkness and sin. The damn Methodist way did not buy you. The damn Jesus uh, did not buy you. The damn Pentecost uh, did not buy you. This is what uh, Kephar is saying. Uh, all of your ritualistic actions, you, you keep in Christmas uh, and, and Easter and all your damn pagan lies. He's simply implying that this was fruitile. It was empty. You were not redeemed that way. You were not your redemption, your ga'al. The power to redeem you. And to show you have a kinsman that stand like Boaz. As he redeemed all the way at the by. Ruth from the one that she was promised to. Your shoe has bought us. He has purchased us from hell. It was the kinsman that was next in line for her. And the thing that was next in line for us was hell and darkness, destruction and death. So he had to come take away the sting and the power of death. He had to go all. He had to pass all and redeem us. He had to pass back from hell. He had to write our names in the book. He had to put them in his bosom, his heart, Yisrael. So damn their silver, these weak, coward jackasses telling people to buy silver. These cowards to buy gods. Our weapons of this warfare, they are not carnal, but they are spiritual and they are powerful to the pulling down of strongholds and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yah. Casting down every damn imagination and every concept that try to exude that thought over the very statues and the wisdom of Almighty Yah. You're not going to be able to buy the wisdom of Yah. You're not going to be able to sell it. You're not going to be able to give it to your ark to assure him and reassure your hopes. You're not going to be able to do that. And the only ones that in the midst of such a, a depleted and dilapidated world... Those that would find some kind of maneuvering in the midst of all of this chaos. Those that have sold themselves unto hell. And their sons of perdition. We don't sell ourselves that way, Yisrael. Hallelujah. 
He said, these are fruit out thing. He said, but we have been in verse 19, but with the precious dam of Messiah, Yeshua. As a lamb, a say without blemish. He was tomim, he was perfect. The Torah of Yah is perfect. It is what buys us. The Torah when Yisra sinned, it was the Torah that bought them. It was the Torah, the offering unto Yah that bought them. It was the precise manner in which you brought the offering unto Yah that bought you back. He said, but we've been bought. It was the shedding of the blood of the beast and those animals, the shedding of the dam of Yahshua, HaMashiach, Yisrael. Yah has not changed. We just can't perform those things as they did, but he has performed them all for us through Yahshua, HaMashiach, Yisrael. But it's by the precious dam of your sure lamb with a spot of blemish. Listen to Yah. Who verily was foreordained before the foundations of the world. He knew that we would need to be brought back. He knew that we had to be Gaal. He knew that there would have to be a time that we, we have to buy and sell us the truth, Yisrael. He sold his son that we can buy the truth of Yah. And Sarah, when she heard the Melak say that uh, you all said you're going to conceive and bring forth a child, she says, How silly can he be? You got to keep that name Spartan Sarah because it means a noble woman. You got to stay noble all your life, little ones. She that pay no attention to me, that's all right. Hallelujah. And yet the sea was brought forth. Was not that beyond nature's course for a woman to have a baby at that age? And there is no way out. How do we get out? Yah is going to prove his power. We're just weak, fledgling, immature, insecure people. We get insecure about the least little thing. We're so insecure and unsure. The world has trained us well. And that's a fact, Yisrael. Who verily was foreordained, Yoshua, before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last days for who? For Yisrael. In this Akharis, he's been manifest. What? That the testimony of the power of your Zachim will be real when he, when he ministered unto us, our Ach, our Ahot, when they come and say, Yabrak. You have the sense of, uh, of revitalization and life. It began to fill your bosom. Instead when they say, Yabarak, and you know it's a curse because this just isn't right. You are Yabarak, and you know it's not sincere. You can't have sweet and bitter water flowing out of the same fountain. Blessings and curses. You're blessing today and then you're, you're karad, you're cursing the next day. It's not of Yah Yisrael, Yah. We better get real. Huh? That's why Yah knew that because Abraham, uh, he was a man that walked in what he had prescribed unto him. Uh, that even in the midst of all of Sodom, that Yah was able to share that with him. Uh, we need messengers today that Yah will share this truth with. Uh, we need men today that he will open up the revelation of this knowledge to. Uh, not telling you to buy some damn goal. Uh, Gold is not going to buy you bread. The bread shall be corrupt. It shall be, it shall be spoiled, Yisraya. We need a bread that... Come on, Yisraya. We see when they bought bread, when they tried to take more than the manna, what is this? Uh, that they tried to put some back to hide it. Uh, it stink that next morning, didn't it? Because y'all's going to prove his either you're going to trust him all the way or you don't frankly give a damn. You trust him. He's going to provide. He's going to make a way in the midst of all of that. There is no way we're coming out. There is no way. We can look at natural scenarios like in India and China where by poverty in India is just out of poverty. They don't come out. Generation after generation after generation after generation after generation. Burn to that slate. He has said in the midst of all of that, all opposition, all odds against you, you're coming out. I'm bringing you out by the power of my Torah. He has laid all this before the foundations of the earth. You tell these men to go to hell, they tell you to buy gold. Send me the money you're going to buy gold with. Send me the offering. 
And I will sell you some real gold, all right? Uh, not this damn fool's gold or this fool's silver. Hallelujah. I'm not taking a backward seat. I'm not bowing down to the gates of hell. We need strong men. We don't need fledgling weak boys, weak men. Hell, don't come tell me the power of Yahweh when you don't even trust him. Don't come to me that way. You just show me you're striving to please him and to live right. That's a fact, Yisrael. Hallelujah. I won't discount that. Can I move a little further? I want to move quickly here. This whole thing in Revelation, it is about one thing. Shaha. It's about falling and bowing unto Hashatan and the beans. And I want to prove that in the process. I'm going to read somewhat expeditiously, but I want you to follow along with him. I would have began here in the beginning here when the messenger of Yah was sent in Revelation chapter 3. I will spend the rest of the day in this one book, Revelation. Here. If Yah repeats something more than one, two, three, he repeats this word 170 plus times. How do you know? Because I studied the book to find out. If he repeats it more than one time, it has great vitality and it's vital to us, isn't it? It begins here as the messenger of Yah, as he dispensed, as he revealed unto Yakahan, Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. He says to them, he says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Hashatan. Those that have given their legion unto hell. This is what this is about. Revelation 3 and 9. Which say that they are Yahudim. That they are of the zero of the son of Yahudah. They came out of the same birth lineage as Yahshua. But Yah says that they are of the synagogue of Hashatan. What qualifies that? Because they, they are devoted to the traditions of their fathers. Uh, and the ways that make void the Torah of Almighty Yah. They reject the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. And they are of the synagogue of Hashatan. And you go to a synagogue to offer up oblations and offering. He called them of the synagogue of Hashatan. He said, and they are not of the zira of the seed of Yahuda. They can call themselves Jews. But that doesn't mean a damn thing to Yah. It's amazing that you can speak against any people or talk about their wickedness. When you talk about those that are Jews, you're going to get a blot. People are afraid. I'm not afraid. That which is in the land we call Israel is the wicked people. They're full of fever just like those that came to this land. They stole, they robbed. Hell, those that call themselves the Palestines, uh, they are under a holocaust that is greater than what we, what Adolf Hitler uh, subject that people under. And nobody gives a damn, do they? Yah commands us to love our neighbor as I love ourselves, uh, for us not to hate even our enemies. If our enemy is hungry, you feed them, and then you blockade and keep food from a wicked people, you're more wicked than them. He said, Behold, I will make them to come and worship. You see what Yah says here? You see what he says? He said, I'm going to make them. They have held, but every knee shall bow. When you're sure, when the power of the light of Yah shine, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. They're not going to confess the damn name Jesus or Lord or God. They're going to cry the name of Yahshua Hamashiach. He said, I'm going to make them to come and worship before my feet. You say that you have the supreme power of hell, but you're going to bow before my presence. You're going to bow. You think that Hoshotan doesn't know that this was written before the foundation in the bosom of Yah? But you tell, know that he has tried the finagle and find himself around that all of the days that he has manifested his wickedness upon this earthly realm? Yah says they're going to come and fall at my feet. Those that are of the origins of hell, they're going to come into my presence and bow. Now this is one, Revelation 3, 9. We're going to deal with just one word here today, the worship. How that this is all about worship. You're not going to redeem yourself. We must understand how we fall prostrate before Yah and to honor Him. Revelation chapter 4, verse 9 again. Here's the vision of Yah. 
as Yachahan sees the beauty of the throne of Yah, the beauty of Yah's manifestation. And there were four or twenty-four Zachin elders before the throne. Revelation 4, 9. And when those beasts, they had given God, oh, they had given honor and splendor and Torah to him that sat on the throne. Who lives forever and forever. And the four and twenty elders fall down before him. That sat on the cassia. And they worshipped him. That lives forever and forever. And they cast their crowns before the throne saying. As you are sure the very image the power of Yah. You are worthy O Yah. To receive to feel wrath and honor and power. You have created all things. You have created all things. And for your pleasure, they are and were created. Everything, death, hell, and all. He saw this amazing manifestation of power. And you know just like uh, Yehoshua when he went to present himself unto Yah. Then Ohashatan standing watching the very processional uh, and the preceding actions, uh, what was manifested. That's why when the sons of Yah were to present themselves before Yah, then Hashatan came along to accuse Ejob. It's written in the book that you're familiar with. Uh, it's about worshiping Yah. It's not about you buying biscuits. And bread. It's all about that. And see, that's the element that the enemy has removed uh, away from uh, the minds of the people today. We get very lethargic. We, there, there is no excitement that Yah has created you for his pleasure. To bring him honor. We, we, we have no voice. Uh, hell, if you had one tongue, you don't praise them. You will quote what died. We never had 10,000 tongues. I, I couldn't praise them. I could not agree. I could not uh, 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 appreciate what he said. Hell, you got one tongue and you don't even show that appreciation. You don't even concur with God. You don't even say amen. You don't say hallelujah. You don't say tola ya ya barak. You don't say a damn thing. So he will be a waste of his energy to give you 10,000 more damn wicked tongues to do even more wickedly. Huh? Yeah. I'm not taking a damn word back. Yeah. That's how wicked we are. Yeah. Our mouths will fill with every kind of folly. But when it comes to God, we can't say a damn thing. And the four and twenty others, they fell down because uh, he was the one that was worthy. Yes. You are the one. You're sure never. He never distracted from the worship of the Abba. He pointed all things to the Abba, Yisrael. And yet when we fall down before Yahshua, it's simply our appreciation for the power of the Most High. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise him enough. You Jezebel, you weak fledging, they're going to think all yourself a man. You got one and you don't even say hallelujah. You don't even praise Yah. You don't even consider him. We're damn liars. We don't see our facetious, wicked damn ways, do we? We don't recognize how damn corrupt we are. He's going to damn this wicked nation. It's all about this, the worship of Yah. Hallelujah, Revelation 5, 8. Let's look at this. We should strive honor unto our Abba. Because he has given us the one that is able to open the book. Only you're sure. Your Kahan saw this great vision. It was so ra'ah, so visible to inspect and to see it. It was beyond reality. And he gives us an account here in Revelation 5, 8. It says... Uh, who is able to take this book out of the hand of Yah and open it? Who is able to open the book of wisdom and revelation? Only Yahshua. That's why he must dwell in us, Yisraya. Only Yahshua can open up the book of revelation and knowledge. Only Yahshua can open up the truth of Yah, Yisraya. You understand? And so when they say for this book, when no man, no man in the earth, no Melach was found worthy. There arose one of the Shebat of Yehuda. These damn false ones, they say they are the tribe of Yehuda. They're lies. One rose up to carry the banner. Yoshua HaMashiach. 
And there is only one that opened up the gates of darkness uh, whereby our minds are the light of the power of Yah can shine. Uh, and that is Yahshua HaMashiach. That's why we need the Edah. We need the light of His witness in our bosom. We can talk all the damn talk we want to, Yisrael. It doesn't mean a damn thing. Hell, we don't even have appreciation for Yah. He woke me up this morning and I am eternally thankful unto him. Well, I didn't feel excellent in my body. I received an email from one there in Missouri. I correspond with the elder. His wife just left this world yesterday. And suffering with a great bout of cancer. My heart was smitten. I will write the old man this evening. My heart was smitten. And as the old folks would say, that could have been you. And we don't have the intestinal resolve of fortitude to, to acknowledge this one that uh, has done all things and created all things with his pleasure. Something is wrong. Look at what Yorkahan says here in Revelation 5 8. And what your sure had taken uh, the Sefer, the book. And the four and and the and the four and forty, the four and twenty-four B, twenty elders, uh, they fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them the harp and golden vials full of odor, which all the prayers of Yisrael, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Kedushim, the prayers of the Yisraelite Kedushim, that all of their prayers are bound in the book. Of salutations unto Yah, that this great wisdom and great reverence. I want to drop down quickly to verse 14. And the four beasts said, So be it. And the four and twenty elders, they fell down and they worship him that live forever. We don't even know how to bow ourselves and fall down in the presence of Yah. Yeah. We don't even know how to bless him for Yahshua. Yeah. Hamashiach, because he is not really real. He's just an enigma, a false concept in our minds. Who is able to open the book? Who can open up the very heavens of the prayer of Yah, like Daniel Yah, in the midst of all the great trials and tribulation? And when the messengers of hell fought against the very power of Yah's assurance to his bosom, 21 days and yet on that day when Yah says let my truth go forth all hell could not hold it back he said from the day that your tefillah your tefillah your offering of Torah and salutation was heard the first day you prayed it Yah heard it and he sent me to battle because uh, this is the very order of the battle that you should battle. This is the battle of Yisrael. We're going to have the battle against hell. We're going to have the battle against our weaknesses and our lack. We're going to have the battle against our insignificance and our inabilities. We're going to have the battle against our doubt and our, our false nature. And so that's what that represented there. The forces of hell, there is a formidable foe and they're real. They have power to resist and fight against you. Don't be amazed at that because even the messengers of hell can transform themselves to identify with those that have the awe and the light of Yahshua HaMashiach. This is not some little Hanukkah battle. We know that there are many afflictions, but we know that there's an assurance that He delivers us out of them all. Yeah. We know that. You're not going to buy your way out. Yeah. Your silver and gold is not going to buy your way out. Yeah. All of your money, all the food you got back is not going to buy your way out. All the pleasures of this life is not going to buy you out. Yeah. It's greater than that. Yeah. We must keep as Abraham. We must keep the Torah, the mitzvah, the statutes. We must keep the works of Yah, the works of Sadiq. We must allow his Torah to have its perfect work, the power, the testimony of Yahshua to have its perfect works in us. Yes, Yah. It must be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to do as the elders, the Melachim, and the messengers of Yah, as they, as they go before Yah, there were songs of praises. I want to deal with that a little bit here in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. 
Here's a song of praise. You want to sing a, a, a beautiful song to Yah? Yoka Hansen, after this, uh, I looked and behold, uh, he said, uh, I saw this great multitude, those that had overcome the very onslaught of hell. He said, I saw this Gada, it was a multitude that was great. And the more they marched, the greater they became. He said, and that no man can number. They did not receive the number of the beast or the number of his name. No man can number. Who? What man? No man. He was not talking. He did not say men, did he? He said, no. Does it say no men can number or no man? It says no man in Revelation chapter 7 verse 9. And the man of sin wants to mock the mind uh, to give allegiance unto him to defy the Torah, to defy the Shabbat, uh, the order of Yah. He said that no man can number. No man will be able to buy or to sell, Yisrael, unless they receive the mark or the name or the number of the beast or his name. He said, but yet there was a number that no man could number. They could not impose that number upon them. He said, of all nations, Yisrael scattered into every nation. Not just in this little filthy, wicked place we call America. He said, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the Kase and before the Lamb. They were clothed with the white. This is Loban. The white robe of Yah shined with the brilliancy of the cleansing, purifying of Yah. No damn white race, a black race, a blue race, a green race, as folks want to justify that. Their robes were laban. They were sparkling with the, with the brilliancy of the hand craftsmanship of Almighty Yah. I don't give a damn what you get crafted here. It becomes corrupt after the first time you touch it. You ever bought a pair of shoes, wear them one time, and you just said, I don't like them. The next time you looked at them... Don't come on hypocrites It is the truth my friend You get something after you touch it You corrupt it Let's get real He saw and they were clothed with white robes Hallelujah They were clothed with the beauty of Yah Hallelujah I want to tell you something Yisraya This whore has taught the nations That there will be a rapture but these are those that have gone through great tribulations and great trials. There is no damn rapture, you understand? We're going to be enraptured when your sure come. But there is no rapture before the time of your sure's coming. Look at this. And cried with a loud voice saying, Your sure salvation to our Abaya, which sits upon the Kasse, the throne. And it says that also to the Lamb of Yah, your sure Hamashiach. And all the Melikim stood round about the throne, and about the elders, four beasts, and about the elders and the four beasts, they fell before the throne on their face, and they worshiped Yah. They didn't have to beg for bread. They didn't have to buy bread. They worshiped Yah. They fell because they knew that He was the one that had redeemed this people out of great trials. And they were dressed in the purity of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. We must have this testimony in our bosom, Yisrael. And when these other Hashemam saw the beauty of this processional, they could do nothing but fall down. I don't know if there are tears in Hashemam, but they just fell down and began to shakha, to worship, to fall prostrate, and to moan and to groan with great salutation. When they saw the beauty of this processional of Yisraya from every nation coming forth to bring the offering. There's going to be a day of oblation unto Yah. There's going to be a time of great offering. And that's why we need to understand that now and understand the value of it. And that's why the enemy keep our mouths shut and keep us uh, so sedated in our flesh. Something is wrong when we cannot offer unto him oblation. I'm not talking about for the moment. It must be a consistent thing. It must be a thing of evolution. You must evolve. Our flesh is so drunk with such uh, sadistic, wicked na nature, uh, so wicked, so corrupt, that we denounce Yah. That we did all of his, in all of his dancing, in all of his shouting, in all of his singing. Yet he was not ashamed to bless Yah. The Michael Shaul's daughter looked at him and said, what a silly thing. And yet he danced in the Ruach. And he sings. 
that he come to the conclusion, Yav, you had a thousand, if you give me a thousand tongues, I couldn't pray, I could not salute you enough. And he gives the nation one tongue. We should have the same mind of Yahshua. Sure, that should be that tongue. And yet we don't know how to worship Yah. We sit before the Abba all succumb to our wicked flesh. There's one thing about me. I will always acknowledge truth. I don't care how simple the mouth that teaches it. That I will do. I just can't sit quietly. And still before my Abba. I cannot. You can. I won't do it. Even when I don't feel like doing it, I do it. Even when there's no resolve in me to do it, I still do it. Even when my body's not pressed to do it, I still do it. What a damn wicked generation. We say we love y'all. We're damn liars. We don't give a damn. I will, man. If you say nothing but come on, that's all right. I will. Hallelujah. We're damn liars. We're full of our own dung. And we don't want nobody to confront them with the, with the bush in us. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even the elders fall down before him when Hashatan sees this. Yes. That's what he's looking for. So when we defy, when we, come on, when they went into Yerushalayim, you think they went in there tiptoeing, they went in there with the, with the sound and the blast of the shofar. Yes. That's why the sound Phoenician woman said to Yoshua, you know that true worshipers worship him there in Yerushalayim. Yoshua said, it will come the time when no man shall worship him in the mountain or in this place. But those that are the true worshipers of Yah, they must worship him uh, in Ruach and Spirit. What is Ruach? It's the life of Yah. Yes. Hell, if you don't have the life of Yah, you have no power. In order for those to worship Hashatan, they must have the life of darkness in them. And there is nothing but death in darkness. He said they must worship Yahshua Yah in Ruach and Spirit and the life of the power of truth. And that life and the power of truth is through the witness of Yahshua HaMashiach. If you don't have that in your damn it, you won't do a damn thing. Yeah. You'll worship a damn biscuit and a piece of bread. You get excited about a piece of damn cake. It's a stupid generation. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. And so what I do, you can follow me. And follow me the way I do it. I'm not following no man that has no excitement about Yah. And that's just a fact. I don't give a damn who you are. He will forsake you and betray you. I don't give a damn who the man is. And that's a fact. The name, when I hear that name, there's... Who, who's the old fat fellow that sings this on? There's something, he used the word Jesus. There's something about that name, Yahshua. It's the sweetest name. I've ever heard. It's the name of life, Yisrael. Yeah. When you can't buy nothing, you'll be able to buy that name. Yeshua, 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 Yeshua. When all death has, uh, has taken its stronghold over you, you could just call Yeshua. Yeshua. When you're in the thralls of death and the pains of death, there's, there's no redeeming from death but the name Yeshua. That's all you do, your shoe. When, when you can't even utter anything, when you can't utter mama, daddy, you just, your shoe. Your shoe, your shoe. Come on, Yeshua, there's something wrong with us. We are a stubborn generation of people. We don't even try to break our damn wicked ways. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. I do things when I, come on, I, I do things. Uh, I was talking to this arcane bit of me. Yes, I say, look, I do things because I know my body. I can't do it. I do it because this is what gives me a little strength. I do it because I don't feel like doing it. And we sit before Yah as stubborn as a wicked beast. That's just like a bull in the field. You can prod and it's just... And we don't even move. Come on, something is sick in our damn minds. Hallelujah. Revelation 11, 1. Revelation 9 and uh, hallelujah. Where did I just stop? I want to go to Revelation 9, 20. Let me read this quickly. Look at this. Now this is what the powers of hell began their processional here. When the fifth milach, the fifth shofar was blown. And we know that the, the, the Torah says that the stars began to fall from Hashemaim, these, these angelic powers of darkness. They were cast down to the earth. And Yaakov said, in the midst of all of that, in Revelation 9.20, he 
He said, out of all of that, through death and through the very agony of the great afflictions of darkness, uh, and for her short time, he's going to command your allegiance. You're going to receive and honor that name, and you're going to bow just like Daniel Yahweh when, the, when you hear the sound of the musical instruments in the plains of Dura. Everyone bow down and worship the God of Nebut Shenadzeh. And yet those that were of the Imuna of Yah had the strength of Yah. O king, we're not fearful. They're not boys. These were, these were not Naha. These were Bin Adam. These were men. We've learned that from the wicked whole house, the Hebrew boys. No. They were men. Yeah. Were founding warriors. Say, damn your God and damn you. Yeah. We are not afraid to speak to you the way that Yah yeah commands us. We will not bow down to your damn God. Yeah. And if you cast us into the fire, that's why you heated it seven times over. He made a perfect fire. And yet it consumed all the dross that were around them. And not one hair was singed. Yeah. And in the midst of all of the fiery trials, uh, that that fool got off his throne and he said, Did not we cast three? Yet I see four. Behold, as the image of the Son of Yah. He must be the image of our minds. We let every kind of damn image in our minds. And we exalt. He must be the image of our mind. We must keep that image of truth. What is his image? Truth, Yisrael. He said, Through the midst of all the fire of hell, uh, Revelation 9 20. He said, and those that were consumed by death by the powers of darkness. Uh, he said, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues. By the plagues of Yah. Yet repented not. They did not shoot. They did not turn around repented not of their works, of their hands. That they should not worship devils. Shut them. They're worshiping demons and devils. It's all about that in the midst of all of that, see, in the midst of all of that death, Hashatan uh, shall set his credence among the nation of people. We are in the covenant of the Brit of the covenant of Yah in Yeshua, HaMashiach. And all of this death, uh, they will say, and this the God that you see you want to serve, uh, we, we have the power of the living God. Uh, you sign your legion unto us. Uh, give your mind, give us the power to, to embody you uh, or to put strength in you. Uh, and you shall redeem yourself. You shall buy back yourself from all of this agony and all of this pain. That's what it's about. Nobody's going to be able to alleviate the pain. Nobody's going to be able to, to buy themselves or to have some kind of little reprieval from all of the agony and, and the anxiety. They give you drugs for everything today, don't they? You're not going to be able to get your drugs. You're not going to be able to get your drugs. You're oppressed or you're schizophrenic. You're not going to be able to get your drugs. They give you, give you drugs for, if you're crazy, they give you drugs if you're sane. They give you drugs to lose weight. They give you drugs to, to gain weight. They give you drugs to banish your, 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 your bodily uh, 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 function and all, don't they? Hell, everything it is, you take a pill. Everything. They give you a pill to die. They give you a pill to live. They sell us all kinds of pills, don't they? We might as well say hallelujah. I don't give a damn if you're guilty. Unless when you acknowledge truth, you can begin to move into the power of Yon Simuna. We acknowledge your ways. Come on. And begin to acknowledge his ways. We acknowledge him in all of our ways. Uh, and we acknowledge him. It's more than a damn expression of verbiage. It's the power of this life. And though he slay me, I will trust him. Though he kill me, I still will trust him. In the midst of all that and all of this, listen. No man was able, no one was able to redeem themselves. They didn't even repent. Those that worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone. Why are not these people telling people to buy brass? Why is it just silver and gold? But well, these are the three commodities here. No matter of fact, there are five here. Gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood. This is, it, this is it, which can neither see, they don't hear, nor can they walk. Neither repented they of their murder, nor of their sorcery, 
nor of their fornication, nor of their ganab. Is not Hashatan a, a thief? The thief cometh not, the ganab cometh not, but to rob, to ganab, to rob, steal, to steal, kill, and to destroy. Is that what he comes to do? And yet they repented not of their sins. They held fast of their allegiance to hell. We have to learn to repent of our corrupt ways. When we are wrong, you change. And when one truly changes, they don't act the same way they did yesterday or the day before or the day before that day. Something is twisted in our damn minds. When we have to repent and repent of the same thing constantly. You have not matured in the ways of Yah. You have not grown spiritually at all. And we must grow, Yisrael. We must grow as a nation, as a people of Almighty Yah. Does the Torah say they worship devils? And this generation is not repenting of their demons, their Jesus, their Christ, their Christo, their Zeus. They're not repenting of that. They're not repenting of worshiping their cars and their homes and their, they spend their lives paying for a house and cars and material things. Stones and wood and clay. They, they spend all their lives trying to amass what they call wealth. They're not repenting of that. They're holding fast to that. They denounce Yah. And yet, even in the midst of death, they will not even repent. Well, my mother on her deathbed, the woman did not repent. There is no teshuva there. You can, you can buy these lies all you want to and say she redeemed herself. Out of all of her life, 99.9 years spending, living a wicked damn life. And then in one second she repents and she dies and she's saved. That's a damn lie. You must work out your soul salvation. Your nephesh salvation with fear and trembling. They are damn liars. Why is it that your wicked mama repented? I will, my ark. That's a damn lie from hell. You got to work at this thing. Uh, that must be mitzvah. You must work. You must work to learn how to love your neighbor and love your ark. You must work, work to learn your uh, hold. You must work to be compassionate and kind. It's not our nature to be like that. We're corrupt. We're greedy and selfish. You have to work at that. You're not going to give your best to nobody. No, that's you. You know you got a little progress when you give what is important to you to someone. I don't have a damn thing I can't give away. I own nothing. I own nothing. No damn watch, pair of shoes. Damn it all. If I give you something, it's going to be my finest. I'm not going to give you something I'm trying to get rid of. I got something I've been holding on for a long time. I want to give him. I said, just hold on to it because it's, I still like it. I'll give it to him. This damn wicked generation. I do too. You all taught me that when I was ignorant. 30 years ago. One that I loved dearly and he, he turned his heart against me. I went in my clothes. I gave him everything that I loved. My beautiful sweaters. Everything. And then he turned against me like a damn beast. I didn't go in there and give him the things that I didn't like. You ought to give us something he didn't like. He didn't give us something he didn't like. I didn't go in there and pull out rags. I pull out what I thought was my best. My fine Carnegie sweaters and everything. And then this beast turned against me with a damn faggot preacher. That's all right. Oh, there were tears, but that's all right. I'm still pressing on. Can we move a little farther, Yisrael? Yeah, we, we're dealing with this one, uh, Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. Hallelujah. And, and this is what, this, this, this verse right here, it, it's a state of the assembly or Yisrael, the call of the elect of Yah. It is represented here as in the measurement of the tabernacle of Almighty Yah. Revelation 11, 1. And there was given unto me a reed like a rod. And the Melach stood saying, this is what he said to me, uh, saying, rise and measure the Beit HaKadosh of Yah and the altar and them that worship 
therein. I want you, Yokohan, to measure, to see the scope of the, of the beauty, you to see the broadness, the depths uh, of Almighty Yah. You sing the song, is, the Torah is too hard. You can't go over it. Too wide. You can't get around it. So low it reaches down to even the most repugnant and vile sinful nature of Yisra'ya. To bring us up to the height of it. To expand us of the breadth and width of Yah that our hearts, our minds uh, encompass all that is of Yah. And we love the very heritage of Yisra'ya that was established in Abraham out of his Zira Yitzhak. We see the profoundness of that in Yaakov Yisra'ya that we are the people and the nation that has prevailed against what was not a Sava, was he not this power of the anti Hamashiach, was out of uh, Yaakov, was not the blessing of Yisra'ya, did it not come out of that Zira of Yaakov? It began with Abraham, and out of Abraham was Yitzhak, and Yishchok, and out of Yishchok came uh, Yaakov and is up. Two nations, did it not? One will rise up against one, and one nation shall the blessing of all nations, even the nations of Esau, was in the bosom of Yaakov. Was it not Yisra'ya? And so when he came to pursue him, was not that a great battle? Did he not have to wrestle? Have we not wrestled in the Torah of Yah? Did he not wrestle in that, in that time? Did he not, his imuna was tried? Did he not turn loose the Torah in the midst of all of his sins reveal all of his wickedness all of the battles in his mind and then when the Torah truly touched him and then he was free now I can go now I can walk in the Ruach of Yah I don't give a damn as the old folks will say come hell or high water I shall go on he prevailed your name shall no more be called Yah called the supplanter Yisra'ya, we shall come to the full stature of Yisra'ya in the midst of the trial. Yah has ordained all this. That's why we should give it in all things we give him Torah. Everything, hallelujah. Look down the verse 5 quickly at the same chapter. I want to get these verses read today. So I'm going to move, all right. It says here, this is the description or the coming of the kingdom of Yahshua. The kingdom of Yah dwells in us. And this is the power of that kingdom. Look what it says in, the, in Revelation eleven fifteen. It says that the seven heavenly melech sounded. And there was a great voice. The voice of Yah is great. The seven foes of the voice of Yah, our Zachain has, has been so indebted to bring forth that unto us. It said in the great voice in Shema, I'm saying, the kingdom, the Melchuthim, or the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of your Yah, of Omar Yah, and his Hamashiach. And he shall reign the Olam viat, the kingdom. When this kingdom become the kingdom of Yah, even though the kingdom of the earth shall be Yah's, but this is the kingdom that must become the kingdom of Yah. That our minds have the testimony of Yahshua. We're going to need that kingdom power in the days that are ahead. And when the Melachim saw that, uh, that these uh, Melchuchem, the kingdom became the kingdom of Yah. When they saw that, it says the four and the twenty elders, verse 16, uh, which sat before Yah on their seat. Uh, they did not just bow down, they fell down, it says. Uh, they fell on their faces uh, and they began to worship Yah. Truly when the power of this kingdom uh, and the power of this kingdom uh, is the testimony of the assurance of Yahshua, when it becomes real we will fall down before the presence of Yah. We are arrogant, we are staunch. We show resistance unto Yah. When the kingdom truly comes, Yisrael, the witness of that power, you will truly fall down. When you are empowered with the, with the Ruach of wisdom and wisdom and the Ruach of the Yare, the fear of Yah. The Ruach HaKodesh, we don't have a damn thing. We got a spirit, but it's not the Ruach of Yah. Raise up the Nobi, Yah the prophet. Send the messenger, the true messenger. I will wash his feet. I will cry at his feet. I will. I will. You may not. I will. Because I know I'm a dirty whore. I'm a Muriamak Helene. 
I'm a Miriam. I've been caught in all of my sins. Nothing has been hit. All of my damn filth, nothing has been hit. I've been caught in mine. I'm a dirty whore. A filthy dog. You understand? And because he has forgiven me much, you understand he has forgiven me too much. All I want to do is weep at his feet. The feet of Yahshua. I don't have no hair like Miriam, but I sure can let the tears wash his feet. And I dry his feet with this spotted garment, and the more I dry it, it becomes purer. It becomes whiter. It becomes cleaner. Come on, we fall down like that as the Milak when they saw the great power of Yah. We saw the witness of his kingdom. When we see the witness of Yah's kingdom in one another, your wife, your husband, your children, your Ak, Yisrael Yah, it should make us worship Yah. Because we're so full of damn darkness and wickedness and sinfulness. We're so damn greedy. We cannot even esteem. We don't see the beauty of Yah. That's why the trials are going to burn the hell out of you. Damn this weak, fledgling generation, weak boys. Damn them. Shut my mind away from them. And that is the truth, my uncle. I'm not here playing. But we should have had time to study this. I just put this together this morning because my mind was being led. We need to understand this. Oh, I got 30 pages of scripture. I'm going to get back. But this is still a part of this process. Hallelujah. 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 Just like this beast that shall rise up this government, this power, this entity of hell with the heart of Hashatan. That's what rises up out of us, this beast nature of ours. We got a beast nature. We don't give a damn. I watched the big bull at times and the little small bull. I, I tried to get apples when they were here to all of the ones. Well, the little ones, they don't know. So I throw the small apples to them. They just sniff. They don't mess with them. But that big bull, when he, know, he, he knows that, I don't even have the call. He can hear the thump of that apple on the ground. And when he comes, he doesn't give a damn about the little heifers. The cows or the other young boy, he doesn't want to share with anyone. And so what I would do with him, I'd throw him an apple here and give the heifer because she's carrying your seed, bull, you bullhead. Or I'll feed him with my hand here and throw that one here to keep him occupied. And so that shall arise out of the seed. The, when, the, when Yah uses the word Yam, see ya. He's talking about the multitude of the masses of the people. Yochanan saw this entity of hell that was the, emboldened by the power of darkness. It was a mind. It was a spirit that was so devious and, and of such dark rudimenta. It opposed everything that was of Yah. It exalted itself like Yah to corrupt the minds of the masses of the people. And the world has done a wonderful job in corrupting us all uh, to walk in every kind of deplorable wickedness, uh, to be unfaithful to show this beast nature where we don't give a damn about Yisra'ya. That's those that are listening, uh, and that's us here. That's just our nature. That's why there must be a birth. We must be born uh, from above. We must be born with the mind of your Yeshua's mind. We must be born with the nature of your Yeshua's mind. That damn bull out there doesn't care about his son, doesn't care about the daughter. He's going to put bulls in her when she reached that primal age. You understand? Uh, and that's the way we are. We saw some of the most wicked and hellish, uh, wicked uh, thoughts and concepts among those that you say we love. Uh, this is the power of hell. This is the nurturing of hell for you to receive the very mind of darkness. Uh, that's why it doesn't bother a nation. We do wickedly and it doesn't trouble us. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. I don't care if I think something with it. I, I'm troubled by that. I don't care what kind of thought, even though there's no actions behind that. I'm troubled. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. The Torah says in the book of Revelation chapter 13. 
He talks about this beast rising about the multitude of the people. Whom Hashotan will give great power. This anti, this anti-Yan, anti-Hamashiach. Revelation 13, 1, and I stood upon the sands of the sea, upon the masses of the drove of the people, and I saw a beast, I saw this anti-Hamashiach, I saw this kingdom power, this mind, represented in a man. Was Abraham a man? Out of him did not the zero of Yah, was it not birth out of him? Out of him did not the tribe of Yehuda come, whereby Yoshua Hamashiach came forth out of that tribe? Did not he come? Was not Yahudi Iscariot a man? Was he not the one that betrayed Yahshua HaMashiach? Was he not born of the same loins and of the same birth? Don't write me with this damn folly and say that it would have been against the Torah. The Torah of Yah has been from the beginning before the foundations of the earth. There was a Torah. Before there was a law given by the name of Moshe, there was a law in the bosom of Avraham Yisra'ya. Did he make the first man without a woman? He made the first man without a woman. He used the woman. The earth is the woman. It is the birth chamber of man. It is the birth of all of Yah's creation. She is the woman. She is the woman of Yah. She is the woman but his seed goes forth his word uh, and it bring forth uh, are we not earthen vessels uh, are we not the earthen vessels of Yah so when he sent forth his zero it ought to bring forth uh, fruit from us yesterday uh. so don't tell me that was some kind of act of adultery you damn heathen and fool uh. when Yah sent forth his word it brings forth life but he sent forth his word in a jackass of Balaam. And he said, man, don't you see the messenger of Yah with the sword drawn that's going to kill you, you damn fool. But he sent forth his word, it makes an ass talk. And we are some of the biggest asses. The ass knows this master's crib. We are people who don't even know our master. We're not even excited when he speaks to us. Hallelujah. I uh, saw so this anti Hamashiach rise up out of the sea. I'm going to listen. This next, next aspect, I'm going to teach that thoroughly to us, all right? I'm going to brush over today, all right? Having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his ten crowns, and upon his heads was the name of blasphemy, the name uh, to dispute Yah, the name to condescend, the name of Yah. That's, we, when people, uh, you know, they talk about you don't blaspheme the Holy Ghost. This damn thing they call the Holy Ghost, it is a damn lie. It blasphemes the power of Yah. It is a damn lie. And when one says that this is not attributed to the very mind of Yah, then that's blasphemy. When one says the Torah is not of any relevance today, when they reject his name, uh, that's blasphemy. It is holding Yah in contempt. That's all blasphemy is, uh, is to have contempt for Yah. And if we have the Ruach in us, it witnesses to those things that have been spoken. And this has been spoken. It has been written. So the damn Holy Ghost witnesses to the lies of those that are the damn Holy Thoughts and liars of their Christ, their Jesus. Damn the Holy Ghost. I know the origin of it. I know it. I study. I'm not boasting. I do that. I seek out those things that I think are valuable and important for us to know. And I'm going to write a booklet on it soon. I've been, I, listen, I've been work, I have been working hard around here. I rose up early before. I, rose, I was up early uh, uh, yesterday working. I rose up early to take care of business because I knew it was, going to get, it was going to get hot. So I work. And I just don't have the time. When I come in in the evenings, uh, I'm more out. I don't have the energy. But there are things that I know I must teach and write on. I just don't have the time. I wish I did have the time. I wish I was sending us two faithful young men, families. Strong young ark. But until that time come, I will be faithful. I will not shun my responsibility. I will not put more on this ark. I will make sure that when I do something, it's easy for the next one. When I cut these trees, when we did this out here, I made sure that when we come in again, it was easy for us again. And that's how I do things. And that's the way we all should want to do it. I don't care whether you're in a halt or whomever. I don't want to do just enough to get by. I want to be doing more than what is required of me. 
I want to do more than what's required. I want to do more than what is expected of me. And so I don't have the energy at time. I'm more out and I'm tired. No reason I go there to, to restore my physical strength. That's the only reason. And it does do that. I didn't feel like going on last night. So I'm glad he'll go on next Shabbat evening. He knows that he's free to take that anytime. I tell him all the time, whatever you want to, man. You don't have to ask. Just go on. Hallelujah. In this crazy world we have to deal with. I didn't want to go on last night, but I did. Hallelujah. I know that there are folks that are listening, but they just won't respond. Just like us here, you won't respond. We don't know how to say hallelujah, amen. But hell, I guarantee you, you see something, you get excited. You go to the dollar store, you get excited. I'm not going to stop saying that, because that's the way we are. Y'all went out there, those little ones, they saw those, whoa, look at that, an elephant. Some of you adults, whoa. I will, man. Your verbiage was expression, expressional. You laugh, you say, oh, look at that, ah, look at that, you see, come, come, come here. And I'm telling you, come here and hear. Come on and taste, come on and taste and see that y'all is tough. And here we're blind, we're blind, we're blind. I don't care if you don't agree with me. You don't agree with y'all, so what difference does it make? And they had the name blasphemy. And the bitch, beast which I saw, I will bring all this out in the detail, believe me, I, I'm... The beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth was like the mouth of an airy a lion. And the tanim or the dragon gave him power and his seat of authority and great authority. There rose up this great kingdom power and one that would facilitate that. One that would be embodied by the power of Hashatan. Is not Yisra'ya the kingdom of Yah, his nation? Did he not cause one to rise up to facilitate that kingdom? His name is Yoshua HaMashiach. Did he not send messengers to one and to prepare us for that time? Did he not send Yakahan the Immersion to prepare us for that time? And we, because we think we're students of Torah, as the Pharisees and scribes came to his immersion, he, he said, oh, he said, you wicked and adulterer, you generation of vipers and serpent, you damn dogs, I've warned you to flee the wrath to come. Nobody's warned you to flee that. He said, you better bring fruit there for meat and ready for repentance. You don't come here with that job, man. Who's warning this wicked generation? He's warning us. He's trying to naha, to warn us, to instruct us, to rebuke us, to reprove us, to counsel us, to flee from the wrath of God that is to come. That's why he said to Abraham, we can go back to the better she get out of the place. He said to Lot, the, the Melachim said, I can't do nothing until I bring you out of the city that to lay hold on him. And that wicked identity that he was identified to, this wicked church, it has turned its back on Yah from the beginning. From the beginning, the concept of, of the church was to turn away from Yah. As Yah said in Jeremiah last night, he said, yeah, they have turned their faces away from me. They have turned their backs to me. And that's what this damn dirty whore has done. Turn his back to the Torah, turn his back to the mitzvah, turn his back to the statutes and the instructions of Yah. And that's what we have done, Yisrael Yah. And out of the midst of this chaotic mess arise the supreme power one that we respect intelligence and people that talk well and they're great with their oratorical skills. We like that. I hear them all the time say that Mr. Obama is a great orator. I haven't seen it. If that's an orator, I would, I would kick his barak. If Mr. Obama is an orator, I, I, my, I, I, can, I can orate in a way that would just be far superb to him. My mannerism, uh, the move, I, I can do, I know. If that's what they call great, he was not elected, they selected him. He was not even a junior senator. And they made him president. You understand? Because he knew, and they knew the powers that be the world powers, the demonic forces that operate in the minds of these men knew that this boy would carry out the feet for us. Sure they did. This damn wicked nation is crumbling. You look in every city in these metropolitans, they all got black mayors and all of that because they're crumbling. They always put some Negro fool in there to make them think they're going to restore it. They're crumbling. They're crumbling. I don't care if it's D.C. Uh, with uh, Barry and all. I, I don't care if it's Detroit. I don't care where they are. I don't care if it's Philadelphia. They're crumbling. 
And then you've got the enclaves that move outside and they form their own little communities and they establish their own little, little government, their own mayors. And that's just the truth. And we can be gullible and, and not deal with those situations, but it's just the truth. It's just the truth. And so there are no finances because all the jobs are taken, everything is gone, and you've got total decay. You go somewhere like Baltimore. Last time I was in Baltimore, I, my heart was saddened. And my issue on I, and I didn't drive fast. I was afraid of no one. We drove through that city and the, and the dilapidated, chaotic mess. I said, yeah, if you, I, I could take four city blocks and I could revitalize it. But you have to have the people that will condescend and agree with me. I could revitalize, I create businesses, create enterprise there. You don't have to go outside of the community for the monies to, to, re, to refurbish the place. You can go right there. You, you can employ them right there. Spending the money right there. Spending it right there. You got every kind of store you want, bakeries and all that. Chinese restaurant, hell, we can open up one. You can name it Wong Cha Chung Pen, whatever you want to. And that's a fact. I don't want to get away from the message. I want to move on. Hallelujah. It says, uh, he saw this kingdom power and the one that gave him great authority. And I saw as one of his heads, it was the ha, it was a crushing wound to death. And a deadly wound was healed. I saw the revitalization, the restoring of... And America's not going to be restored. The nations are not going to restore it. I will get into the depths of this in the weeks to come. And all the world wandered after this beast. And this is what it says. And they worship, they worship the dragon, which gave power to the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, who is like the devil? Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? No man will be able to buy or sell. No man will be able to redeem. Who is like this entity? Who can restore a kingdom, can restore us to vitality? Who can cause us to have a, a, a sense about ourselves and who we are, that it will generate this purpose in our lives? Isn't that what the Benny Hens and the T.D. Jakes are telling the people? You're greater than you. You can reach from beyond. You must reach to the stars and all of that. These are mercenaries of darkness. These are men of this raised up whore, this whore spirit uh, that has come through uh, what we call Roman Catholicism. Uh, and all these men are those that birthed these illegitimate whores. Uh, they have given our minds over unto prostitution. Yah says to Yisrael, Yah, don't prostitute your daughters unless whoredom overtake the land. And once Horam overtake the land, you said, I'm going to destroy you because you become unclean, you become vile, you become filthy. And so the very precious name of Yah is vile unto this wicked generation because the mind is full of every kind of Horam. What is that? Uh, idolatry and, uh, and false forms of what we call worship. Uh, this religiousity, this falsism of schisms uh, and falsehood. And we see it carried out with the men in these whole houses. Land with the women, land with everything they can lay with. Land with the daughter, land with the men. Yeah. And that's a fact. And they tell you they love you. And sleeping with your daughter. Got eyes on your wife. I would never dishonor a man that way. Yeah. Well, he got a fine wife. She dressed now. She's not coming here dressed like that. Half will put on some clothes. Now, man, if you can't tell her, I will. Now, that's your woman. Don't let her tell her to dress herself up. Cover herself. Yeah. But what's wrong with what she got on? You little weak pencil of a non-human. She's not coming in here that way. And that's a fact. Tell her cover herself. And so these dirty bastards have been sleeping with the women. That's why you don't hear these men. The ones talking about gold and silver. They don't talk about the sexual perversion and this, this filthy thing that are, that's taking place. Because they're za'am. They're, they're, they're adulterous, wicked men. And these have been men that call themselves leaders. I'm not talking about a damn drunk or a man that knows nothing about Yah. I'm talking about men that's supposed to be leading the people. A man that doesn't know a damn thing. How can he be accountable? He doesn't even know what sin is. Hell is in darkness. These men that's supposed to have the light and they walk in wickedly like that. Damn that. I can respect a man that. I, I, I can respect. Hey, listen, I'll do it this way. A man that calls himself a messenger in the truth, I will expose him all damn day long. I catch him. But a man that doesn't even know y'all, haven't even experienced y'all, he began to tell me about it. He said, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. It's not accountable. You don't have to share that with nobody. Shut your damn mouth. You don't have to tell nobody that. Nobody's damn business. Y'all knows it. 
There's wash in the dam. Damn that. But these damn dogs. And so that's what it brings them onto this false religious feeling. Because they, they get up there and they feel what they say. Uh, quote, feel good like I know I should. And they're false. These are wicked men. Two things I, I've never wanted to be. A damn hypocrite and an adulterous pig of an individual. And rape the daughters of Tizayon. That's why I don't, listen women, I don't talk to women. You have nothing to talk to me about. Don't you know that foolish women have come in? Well, the brothers don't say anything to us. They have no damn place to say anything to you. You're married. Shut your mouth. You silly woman. You must be insecure. You want, you want someone to talk to you? Shut your damn mouth. Nobody wants to talk to you. You must think you're fine. And someone wants you. Hell, your own husband doesn't want you. Shut up. Nobody's serenading you. Shut your damn mouth. And you men don't come here folly gagging with our bath. And come here and want to talk to the sisters. Well, the sisters don't talk to the brother. That's, they should not. If they got a question, they ask their husband at home. They don't need to ask you a damn thing. That's how this whore has brought up the women. They, they, they're so silly and loose. They think they get up in any man's face and just talk. Don't get up in my face like that. Not me. You go somewhere, don't come here with that. And that's what these damn liars have taught them. That's what this whore, that's the spirit, that's the nature. That's the mindset that's been raised up against Yah. Well, I don't see nothing wrong with that. It's wrong. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Move it on here. Hallelujah. And they worship this beast. And they worship the dragon, verse 4, and gave power to the beast and worship him, saying, who is like him? Who is like Yahshua? Who is able to make war with him? You, you know that the Torah says that Yah is known as a man of war. And this is the mindset that can't nobody make it. Can't nobody bring me down. Verse 8 of the same chapter is the culmination here. Look what it says. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Does it say all? Does it say all? Come out of her, my people. All that live in the pleasures of the earth, all that enjoy the pleasures of the earth, all that dwell, that live upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life or of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. How can he be slain from the foundation of the world? And yet he was offered before the foundation of the world was presented. And all those whose names are not written, that's why us, you that are written, there shall be great trials. There shall be many afflictions. And we're going to know that who is able to make war with our Abba? Who can fight against him? Your arms are not long enough. You don't have the sword to fight against Yah. There's nobody that can fight against Yah, Yisra Yah. That's our assurance. That's our comfort as a nation, as a people. Uh. It's all about worship. It's all about that. That's why this power, the powers that be are drawing the people on all kinds of delusions and illusions, Yisraya. To bring about a, a credence of, of respect and regard. That's why we get, we, that folks is still crazy when I say, damn Jesus. Damn the Holy Ghost. I have no fear of that. Well, I won't say like that. I know you won't say like that because you don't have what I have. That's why you can't say it like that. When you get why I'm, you can say, don't worry about it. Don't try to emulate me. But I have no fear in saying it. Hallelujah. I don't fear my boy. Who can make war with my Yoshua? Some damn Jesus? Damn the Holy Ghost. Of the Ruach. And the life of Yah. And what Paul said, that life is the, the passion and the pledge of Torah. Yes. Hallelujah. One day I'm going to teach on the warriors of Dawid. He had some bad war boys. And one was by the name of Mahalaya. You would think that you all look and read all you can about Mahalaya, wouldn't you? We don't do. We love Walmart, Kmart, the Dollar Mart. We love Walmart, Kmart, Dollar Mart, and Dollar Store, and Rag Pile. When it comes to the true riches of y'all, we frankly don't give a damn. You think the warriors of Gideon were tough? You, you haven't seen anything. I'm going to teach you on it one day. One day y'all grants me time. I, I, I'm already pondering the winter. I know things will not be like this. So I don't worry about gardening and all of that. And I can kind of write and 
do some things and studying, I can. You have sent us two or three beautiful families, young men that are country and love you and willing. That's what I want. Well, I could bring other folks here, but I'm not bringing them here. You understand? I'm not going to do that. I want faithful men that love you and soul out to him. No give a damn about this world. I don't want to sit around and do nothing. I can't do it. I can't sit around in front of a damn computer all day, me, and look and read. I can't do it. I must get up. And once I start the purse bar, I'm ready to roll. I can't do it. I cannot. That's just me. I can't. I have to make this old body move. I can't do it. I can't sit around. It. That's just me. I can't do it. I can't do it. Even when I'm sick, I have to get up. I do. Moving on, the Father, because I want to close out here. I want to. I got a lot, but I want to give you a foundation here. Revelation chapter 13. That's where I began, didn't I? Revelation 13, 13, 17. But I want to read this quickly here. It's not about buying food and having food. Revelation 13 here and verse 11. And it talks about that identify this kingdom, this say, this beast, uh, like the lamb. It said he was like the lamb, but he, he, had the, he had the very tenacity of the beast. Revelation 13, 11. I will go verse by verse. That's what I'm doing. And teach all of this. And I will show you the, all uh, the intricates of all of this that I'm reading, all right? I'm trying to prove one aspect that they worship. It's all about worship. Revelation 13, 11. And behold, another beast. This is the power of this, this prophet, this false entity. I saw him come up out of the earth, out of the minds of the people. This is the kind. You, you know, people, they, they want to create the kind of person that, that they want, don't they? They want the kind of preacher to promise a smooth thing. Tell me nice things. Uh, tell me I'm sweet. Uh, tell me I'm loving. Uh, that's what they want. So he saw this one coming up out of the creative mind uh, of the one that had given them the kind of mind consciousness or, or the concept of the mind, uh, this one that was anti -yah. So the image of the one that shall lead and the create the image of the power of the one that was before them, uh, he had to come out of the created collective mind of the earth, Yisra'ya. So he came up out of the earth, out of the earth investors, out of the people, out of the conscience of the people. Oh, and, oh that's the one. Uh, who will you take Barabbas or Yahshua? Give us Barabbas. Kill that beast. That's what they said. They hollered, give us Barabbas. Give us this uh, insurrectionist. Give us this thief and liar. Give us this damn dog. But that one kill him. Damn it, kill him. Spit on him. Ah, kick him if you can. Let me get back. Right? Kick him. That's what we do to your shit. We kick him. We spit on him. Give us Barabbas. But, 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 but. What have we done? Oh, I don't want to hear that. Give us Barabbas. Come on, Barabbas, Barabbas. I have done no wrong. Fed them damn peace. Quiet, huh? That's all right. He said in this beast in verse 12, he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. And he caused the earth and them that dwell within to worship. He's going to say, this is your Ga'al. This is your Kana. This is your redeeming power. Look at this earth. Do you see that? I can't even imagine that is Miss Re'im. I can look at things that uh, I see the poverty in land. I can look at the bombing in Iraq. I can look at the bombing in Afghanistan. Just see the, see the pulverizing, depleting. When everything is just... You, and you can see it in the uh, faces of the people. They're just dejected and rejected. There is no hope. And here shall rise this darkness of hell to override Yah that's what it's all about even when we as a nation of people we're always trying to override the tub with something evil from our mind our minds are not trying to to uh, to accent or to prove the right when we are proven that we are wrong we want to use our evil minds to override that when we are corrected in matter we're trying to show how excellent and quote how good we are 
There's nothing good in our damn flesh. No tough thing. As far as me, I shall use it. I'm in your category. As far as me, I shall use it. There's no tough thing that dwell in my physical body. Nothing at all. Nothing. And the only thing that is good, only thing that is tough, when Yahshua said that, when they said that Yahshua, there's only one top. There's only one good. Only one top. That's Yah. The Yahshua looks at those fools and uh, they should have known. Uh, come on, look at the works that I'm doing. Are they tough works? Uh, then you know that I am of Yah. I am the word of Yah. If only Yah is tough, uh, if Yahshua is tough, then we that are Yisra, Yah, we are tough. If we walk in the light of his Torah, his truth, Israel, yeah, we must do that. Move in quickly. It says, and, and, and this man, uh, he calls him to worship, verse 13, uh, and he does great wonders, great miracles, so that he makes fire to come down from the heavens. I'm going to fill all this in on the earth and the side of men. I will show you all of that in the months to come. And he deceived them that dwell upon the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, uh, saying to do them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image uh, Unto this beast, which was wounded by the sword and did live. Uh, there shall be this power of this one world ecumenical religious power. That's why they all believe in God. That's why they all have their own faith. And this beast, this tanim, uh, that Satan, this dragon, he shall give his power unto this one that shall be the voice of hell. Uh, did not, did Yahshua not come in the fullness of Yah's voice? Did he not come in the fullness of that voice? So it shall be in the time. So it was in the beginning. It shall be in the end. No different at all, Yisraeliah. Nothing has changed. Nothing at all. And he's going, to, he's going to do great wonders and miracles that people are going to put their trust in them. That's why they put their trust in Benny Hinn. He's not performing one damn mir miracle. They put their trust in someone like T.D. Jake, this big fat beast. that can't, he's, he's, so, uh, he's so out of shape that he walks like that. That's not Yah. I don't care what you say. That's not Yah. That this man's got to bend back and walk like that. Like that. Come on, Yisrael, Yah. Eating the swine feed, chitlins and pig feet and hog maws and talk about it. You know that is not Yah. He is not a represent, representative of the kingdom of Yah. He's representative of the kingdom of darkness, of gluttony and greed and loss. He doesn't need, he, he can't have one $150,000 car. He's got to have three, four, five of them. Million, two million dollar worth of vehicles. Because that's not Yah. He's begging and robbing those little poor women down there. And this bastard wearing thousand, two thousand dollars suits. It's wrong. It's wrong. They're not performing no miracles. There's nothing going to get it. Don't let these liars deceive you. Why? Oh, it was a woman died in my meeting. She, was, she raised a lie. You're a damn liar. There's nothing being done today. Raise up the prophet, y'all, the, the messengers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because he had power to do that, he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. And the image of the beast shall both speak this entity of hell, this created system, that it will not only speak, it will speak to the minds of the people. It will speak to their hearts. It will cause those words to come alive in this beastly nature of ours. Why is it that the Torah doesn't come alive when it comes to do right? We have not hid this word in our heart. Uh, as thy we said that our sin not against you. We've, we've hidden the words of darkness and death. Uh, and wickedness in our hearts. Uh, and when they speak to us they come alive. That's a fact. If it's one thing that bothers me above all things. I would take responsibility for anything. What bothers me about any man, any person. When they don't want to take responsibility. I don't care if it's my wife. And I'll and I reprove her and get on her for that. I hate that kind of weakness. It's all right for me to talk to. But it's not right for me to talk to my Akshimri or her. We're crazy. But I can always see his like, what he should have done, what he did do. But I can't see what I'm not doing. Something is wrong in our damn mind. 
I can point out all that you should do and you have to do. But then see above that. Come on. That's sick. I will, man. I will. Come on. That he should both speak. He's going to cause that beast nature in us. I will get to all this. I'm bringing it down to our level. And he shall cause these false ones of hell. They cause that beast nature. This beast shall cause that one that was wounded. Oh, I've been wounded. They hurt me over there. I was down there in test shooting victory. And that man, he just hurt me. He just broke me. And so they go to some of the most vilified whorehouses. Because what they have hidden in their hearts, it has not been truth. They have hidden lies and corruption, so they find places like that. This has a metaphoric speech, it has a reality, it has a figurative, and it has a genuineness. And I will bring all that out, Yisrael. Yeah, come on, I don't want to pour too much on us today. It's a labor for me to even teach it the way I want to teach it. Because I know that there's much to this, you understand that? It says again, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Do we have images in our mind? Do we have images that are corrupt, that are against the very image of you? Come on, Yisrael, yeah, sure we do. And when we hear words to give life unto those false lies and those images, it causes us to come alive. Not only is this figurative, not only it's, it's, a, it's, it's a metaphor or reality, but it is substantive for our own lives that we can identify what's in us. So when we hear that which speaks that is against, yeah, and it causes us to get happy, causes us to come alive, you know that's the nature of a damn beast. And the image of the beast shall both speak these words, speak uh, of the image of their own nature, that beast in our minds. And we have not the mind of Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, then we have the mind of the beast, Yisrael. And so with the words that soothe the mind of that beast speaks to us, uh, we get happy, we get contented. Uh, Yah commands us in the mind of Yeshua HaMashiach, therefore having food and raiment, therewith be contented. The beast says you got to have a 10,000 square foot house. You don't even clean up a 750 square foot house. And the images, and that's what speaks to our minds now, images. And the images speak causing as many that will not worship the image that they should be killed. When there is no satisfaction or fulfilling in our own bosom of what things that we think should be right, then it calls us, we become disinserted. We become disconnected. I'm going to bring all this out, Yisrael. Believe me, I got it here. I've searched the book. I've searched it from the Yeshav, from Hanach. I know all of these metaphors, all right? I will bring it out. Don't worry about it. You just grasp this today, okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, here in verse 16, it is all about the obligation. Those are going to have to be, they must be obliged, just like uh, uh, they must give their allegiance unto hell. It says in verse 16, for he calls both small, great, and he uses the word rich or kabad. I had to define that when I looked at that this morning. I want to show you what the word rich or kabad mean. It means to be heavy. If you're rich, why are you heavy? Not only with substance having much, but they're heavy. Rich folks are heavy with burdens, debt. It says to be heavy, to be weighty. Well, that is not what it means. They got a lot of money. But it also means to be grievous and to be hard. He calls all men, both rich, poor, every nationality. He calls all of them, listen, poor, dull, and free bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their matse, their forehead. We've told on that. And that no man might be able to buy and sell, say that he has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now where in any place that this indicates that they're going to buy food if they don't have the mark of the beast. It is talking about that redeeming power. And no man would be able to redeem themselves. No man would find uh, the obli obligations uh, or to oblige this kingdom or this mindset unless you have received uh, this atonement. We must do all things in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. And so this power to be that knowing what is president said, that you must do all things in my name. You must 
have your legion unto me. No man will be able to redeem themselves. You're not going to come from under the hellish blows and the crushes and, and, and there will be no repentance. And they didn't even repent of their sins. They worshiped demons and devils. They call out the demons and devils and they didn't even repent. They didn't even know how to repent. The agony of the great pains were upon them, but they could not repent. And it shall be. We have power through the redemption power of the Dom of Yeshua Hamashiach. That's why we can't lose the testimony. We can't let the images speak to our mind. That's why the world always putting images before you. That's why you, everywhere you go is in is images. I don't care. And they're nothing but trinkets and trash. That's all it is, Yisrael. I don't care what they call the finest of finest. You see the big houses built this year, two years later, they look all, oh, you're like, nothing fine about that. You can see the corruption in them. The yards and all that, okay, how far they try to keep it, you can see it there. You can see the dull effects of it. Why would I live for that? I'm living to see him, hallelujah. Amen. Revelation 14, 6. This is the message that should be declared, and I'm going to declare it here. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. And you know what verse 1 says in that book, Revelation. I'm not going to read that, but I know what it says. Uh, concerning those that shall be marked. And yet there was one tribe, the tribe of Dan, that was not there. I'm going to teach on that. I know, I know why. You can only understand this by laboring in the book. I will show us, and I will show you precept upon precept, line upon line. Here, little, I will show you. Give me time, all right? Give me time. I will show you, all right? Listen to this. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. And I saw another Melach from the midst of Hashem. I am having the everlasting message to declare to them that dwell upon the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. This is what must be declared. Not what T.D. Jakes and Eastman. We must do it. All the Zachin, all the messengers of Yah. Say with a loud voice. That's what we must preach. Yare fear ya. Fear ya. Fear ya. And give honor to him. For the hour of his judgment is come. We're in the time of his judgment. This is Mishpatsin. And he tells us, and worship. We must learn how to worship Yah, him that made heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of water. We must worship Yah, Yisrael. That's what this is all about. We must worship Yah. We must bow down. We must fall prostrate. We must worship Yah. We must honor Him with everything that's in us. That's what it's all about. It's not about you. When you worship Yah, you don't have to worry about bread because He will sustain you. He will carry us through Yisrael. That's a fact. He wants us to acknowledge Him. We cannot redeem ourselves. I don't care what kind of work we do. I don't care how nice you are to people. I don't care how sweet you speak. You cannot redeem yourself. And so the message of his truth must be declared. We must teach the people to fear Yah. We must learn how to fear Yah, Yisrael. And if we don't fear Yah, there is no reverence of him at all. I don't care what you say. We must declare this in this hour, for the hour of Yah's judgment is come. It is a very terrible thing to fall into his hands. You don't want to fall into the hands of Yah. You want to be at the right hand of Yah. You want to be covered by the hand of Yahshua. You want the truth of Yah to cover your mind, not for the images of this world. That's what you want. You want him to cover you. You be covered in the dome of your Shua Hamashir. Your mind is covered, is washed, is cleansed. And that He has chosen you to escape His wrath, His karas, His indignant indignation. He don't care. He doesn't care. He's going to kill like a killing machine. He's a man of war. He's a warrior. He's a warrior. And we can placate ourselves all we want to. It's coming to an end. We can pretend all we want to. I can pretend I'm kind and I know I'm a mean, dirty bastard. Woe unto me. You can pretend you're nice and sweet and you know you're damn wicked and dirty. Woe unto you. That's all right. It's going to be exposed and you're going to be exposed. And y'all gives us warning. That's why he must warn. He gives us time to repent. 
And it says, and they repented not of their sins. They worshiped the demons, the shodim, the devils themselves. They worshiped their God. You let the image of your own mind, the image you create. I, I create an image in my mind against my heart, and I let that speak against my mind. I let this beast nature, as this beast shall cause all of them. I let my beast nature speak in my mind to speak against this Zakin, to speak against him. And you let that happen in your own damn wicked mind. It's wrong, Israel. You're not going to get by. You're not going to redeem yourself to say, well, I didn't mean it. You're not going to be able to give an excuse. Say, well, I was kind. You're not kind. You're not sweet. It's almost seen your act laboring. You say you have the love of Yah. And you don't have the heart, the compassion to labor. You sit around and want to do not a damn thing. It's wrong. I was there working at his house, I had to stay on him. He said, Preacher, you got to let me do something. I said, I already do that then. Get out of my way. I'll let you do that. Make these young bucks work. Preacher, I just, I can't, I, you're messing me up now. And he's out there working the young boys that he's granddaddy to. That's a fact. I ain't taking nothing back. You can let him hear that. Hallelujah. Let me read a few more scriptures and I'm going to close. I, I'm all out, Israel. Yeah. Revelation chapter 14, the same chapter 14. Look at what it says in verse 8. Now, I'm going to close out with this here. It says in verse 8, Yochahan said, uh, And there followed another Melach, saying, Bavel is fallen. She has fallen, the great city. Because she made the nation drunk on the wine of her wrath and her fornication. We have a teaching on that. It said, And the third Malach followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man, if anyone, worship the beast and his image. Well, we think, I, I know it's going to be a physical image, but my, ach, Shimri, it's an image of our mind. That's why we must cast down every imagination and every thought ex that exalts itself against the da'at, the knowledge of Yah. And we just think that it's going to be some kind of big old, big old statue, something like that, that was in the plains of Dura. Sure, it's going to be that, but it's an image that we create in our minds. It's something that, that we put in our minds and we create it and we hold on to it. It's almost like uh, you think you're going to get a certain amount of money. You're spending that before you get it. You understand? And then, but you, you're going to buy this and you're going to get that. So we create this, and boy, when you think about that coming, you think about the, what you're going to do and how you're going to spend it. Boy, you get, come on, talk to me. So it's not just some physical image, but it's an image that speaks to our minds. Our images speak to our mind. Our image of our heart, our ox speaks to our mind. It speaks to us ill against him. It's wrong, it's of hell. It's the tenebrous of beast nature. the beast nature and the third Melach follows Sam with a loud voice if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his his mesach or his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yah how did you escape that who is like unto the beast who can war against him I'd rather endure the wrath of Hashatan than the wrath of Yah it says this the same shall drink of the yayin, the wine, the fresh pressed wine. Revelation 14.10. Of the wrath of Yah, which is poured out without mixtures into the cup of his ka'as, his, his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the Kadosh Melakim, and in the presence of Yahshua HaMashiach. And the smoke of their torment ascends up. I don't give a damn what the Jehovah Witnesses say. Olam Bi'ad. Forever, 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 forever. And they had no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever received the mark of his name. It's all about the worship. It's about that Israel.
It's about the image that this beast is not America, the image of this country, a beast. And she used everything to put images in our mind, to put all kinds of images. We create images in our mind, and these images speak to us. They speak to us whether we sit in the house of Yah, and these images speak to us. It is the truth, my uh, and it's wrong. It is the nature of the beast. And we allow, and we began to build these uh, images of concepts in our mind. Whether it is a pair of shoes, whether it's this, whether it's that, we began to see it. Uh, and we visually prostrate before. I can't wait till I get that. Oh, when I get them, I'll be so excited when you get them. Uh, it is the truth. I'm going to stop there for a moment. It is the truth, my Akshimri. It is a fact. It is a true fact. This thing is more, it's more delicate than we, than we think it is. It has more wisdom and power of understanding than what we think it does, Yisrael. Because we don't have a great fervor for it. We don't have a great love for it. We don't want to spend time with Yah. We'd rather spend time at Walmart, Dollar Mart, Dime Mart, and Kmart. And that's just a fact. I was listening to a message last night. And I don't hardly, I'd rather listen to the Ark than listen to what I speak. I really do. And in that message, I remember when it was those, those Ark from Buffalo was at Yahudah. Because I acknowledge them. And I, was, and I was sending the message. I said, this is so real even now. Yeah, it hasn't changed. That we must be real. This damnable hypocrisy and falsehood. We're insincere. We're not sincere. I can't stand an insincere man. I'm sincere in everything. I don't care what I do. I'm sincere in it. I'm a false man. I'm not a pretender. I'm real. I can't stand a false individual. I don't want to be around them. I don't want to be around nobody false and insincere. I don't have to step back from any man because I know there's nothing in my bosom. I'm not going to say step back and... No, no, I, I can stand in the midst of them. Because I know there's no pretense. I can't stand that. I hate that above all things. We must be real. And that's what I... I don't know what I taught on that night, but I know at the end it was concluded with the, the fire was still burning. Hallelujah. And the fire of his Torah must burn in us. I didn't teach all this that I wanted to, but we'll get back to it. There's so much. There are things that I want to teach. You all to understand that. I was up this morning, I, and not only that, but I, I started on another message, and I said, I can't wait. See, even that, I can't wait to get home from service so I can begin my studying this evening. Yabrakyoma, Ach, Zachin, Charles Davis. Yabrakyo, my friend. We're looking forward to to see him one day, beautiful up, always, always concerned about me. He always called me, even if he doesn't talk, he'll call me and say, Ray, I know what you've been doing. I said, man, I'm wore out. He said, I just wanted to hear your voices. I just want to holler at you. You get some rest. He doesn't talk long. He just, he's one of them old timers. He just called to say, how are you doing? So we bless you. You and the out there. Uh, may Yah brock you all. All you that have joined us, wherever you're called, wherever you're listening from, may Yah enrich you all. We're going to get a little rest on this Shabbat today. I'm going to lay down after this service, and I'm going to rest. I had a wonderful sleep last night. I didn't get to bed. We were up last night eating cherries and, and cashews. I was, and I forgot I had some cherries. I, I bought me some cherries, and I said to her, I'm telling you now, woman. Yeah, I said it like that. I will put my name on mine. Don't touch mine. I mean that because you go in there and look, they're all gone. So I will put my name on mine. I'll write my, don't mess, you, you, because sometimes I forget. And so you leave mine alone. That's right, mama. Don't mess with mine. There's papa stuff right here and that's mama stuff. Don't mess with mine. And so we were up, I don't know, 11.30, eating. Yeah, Barack, y'all, let us stand to our feet. I'm hungry now. Turn toward your Rushilaim and all things we do brack you Araba for your excellent your shalom. Or you grant to us, correct us continuously and guide us. And your Torah and your Shus Mardi name. We bless you for all that have joined us in this gathering. I do want to pray for Ara Aktam there. In Missouri, his situation, the passing of his wife and his family, yeah, all things worked according to your tav. We know that all things work according for those that love you according 
into your will, your pleasure. So help him, I pray. Strengthen the old man. And all those that are with him, we pray for all Yisrael, yes, scattered abroad, your nation, your people, your healing power. Guide us and keep us in the midst of this most vile, evil generation. We brought you for all things in this blessed day. Keep us in all things in your sure's name. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Ya Barak Yisrael.